Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today what we got for you is something pretty straightforward, pretty easy. We're going to be installing Spiker Engineering's scan gauge or ultra gauge mount for 1996 through 2002 Forerunners or 1995 to 2000 Tacomas. This mounting bracket for the scan gauge or ultra gauge mounts to the A pillar grab handle. It's a really convenient place to have this information so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. On my other Forerunner, I have my scan gauge mounted below my stereo right next to my shifter lever. And this can get distracting trying to keep your eyes on the road but also monitor some information that your scan gauge is reading out to you. What Leon from Spiker Engineering provides you is a two-piece mount that's going to mount onto existing hardware on your grab handle. You will be providing some different bolts as the factory bolts are known to strip because the factory used Loctite to put them in. So it can be extremely frustrating trying to remove them without stripping the bolt head itself. That's gonna be our most challenging part with this job. And that's what we're gonna to need to make sure that we be careful of is not to strip that out. He always includes some meticulous instructions. So be sure to read your instructions but it walks you through this very straightforward, easy install. Also makes some cool hood struts for our vehicles too. It's magic. So check out the video description below to check out his website and the other products he has. And without further ado, let's jump in the rig and get this installed. So what you'll get with the kit is this mounting bracket, this little bolt with this nylon lock nut, this adapter plate, and some dual lock double-sided 3M tape that will allow you to mount your ultra gauge or your scan gauge to that particular plate. To start this job, we need to remove the A-arm handle. And we really don't need to loosen both bolts. What we need to do is just remove the lower mounting screw. So what we're gonna do first is pry off the lower screw cover with a small flat blade screwdriver. What we prefer to use is a spudger this will allow us to remove any plastic and not mar the plastic because the spudger itself is also plastic. If you've watched our videos before, you'll see us use this tool a lot as a pointer. The screw itself was factory installed with Loctite on the threads, so it's incredibly hard to remove this screw. My screws are going to be easy to remove because I've done it in the past. If you've never removed these screws, then click on the link above to access a video where we use an impact driver to engage the screw, hammer on it to tighten ever so slightly, and then reverse it and hammer on it to loosen it up. Please reference that video because that might be the make or break to get these bolts loosened. What Leon mentions to avoid stripping the screw head is to use a cordless impact driver with a number two JIS, not Phillips bit, such as the Motion Pro JIS crosshead hex drive bit or the Makita impact bit, which we'll list in the video description. So I'm gonna loosen the screw. Again, mine's super loose because I've done this before. There it is. You might be able to see the blue Loctite on there. Makes it a bugger to get off. So we're gonna get our mount in place and we're gonna pull this back. You'll notice that the end of the grab handle is mushroomed out a little bit. So you'll have to kind of finagle it over there. I'm gonna get my bolt back in place and tighten it down. I'm gonna put my little screw cover back on while I'm at it. Next, I'm gonna place the adapter plate over the mounting bracket lining up the hole, and I'm gonna make sure that the cutout for the adapter is on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna put that in there, put the little bolt in here, secure with the locking nut. I'm gonna hold the nut on the back while I tighten this up. Now don't tighten this up fully. You want to allow some room for adjustment. So we're just gonna sit in the driver's seat and just make sure we have it where we want it. If we need to adjust it slightly, we can. And then once we have it where it's preferred, we're going to tighten the lock nut down all the way so it doesn't move anymore. So before we mount the scan gauge to the A pillar, we're going to clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. Oh. 
And I'm gonna peel off the tape here. I wanna make sure the cable clears in this area. So I'm gonna hook up the scan gauge first. And then I'm gonna place it carefully where I want it. And press it on. So what I'm gonna do with the cable is I'm gonna try to tuck it in over here as best as possible. And then what we're gonna need to do is remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold on this panel and we'll be able to hide the cable a little bit better that way. All right, we got this all out. Just pull on it. And just kind of let it hang there for now. Now we can actually route this nice and pretty. And I'm just gonna try to find some areas along the way, along its path, so that it's nice and out of the way. I'm gonna use some zip ties and start to route this around and just try to secure it as good as possible and making sure that it's not interfering with anything else. All right, I got my cable mounted here. I use my little black spudger to push this into place and get it kind of tucked in a little bit more. It comes around here, snakes below there, comes back up through this little white clip thing right here. And then it snakes around and it gets plugged in to the OBD2 port right down here. So next I'm gonna get the panel installed back and we're done. All right, we're up and running here. We can see it working. And it's nice and convenient because you're driving and then you look over and you're like, oh, cool. I got things on my scan gauge and it's telling me stuff, super. I like to show my engine temp and my automatic transmission fluid temperature. And sometimes I like to have my volts there. Miles per gallon, I mean, you can really customize this thing to have whatever you want. If we take a look here, we can see what it looks like from the cockpit. And it's just super convenient and it allows you to keep your eyes on the road with just a quick glance and checking out the information that you'd like to display on your gauge. And so to make sure I don't miss any installation steps, I'm gonna crack a can of my favorite unfiltered water and do just that. Don't wanna disappoint Leon or anything, you know? The taste of celebration. With all that said, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. And if you want to see more of Leon's products and Spiker Engineering, check out their website. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick, sick, healthy mods. And we'll see you in the next one, people. Peace.